Knowledge. What is knowledge actually? Hello, this is Chris speaking, Shores of Infinity, with another video about spirituality. This time about knowledge by identity and knowledge by separation. This is also a video about Jorobindo's The Life Divine, Book 2, Part 1, Chapter 10. But I will make it simple. Every video I'm making, each and every video I'm making, about Shurabindu and they're already 94, I realized today. I managed to do it more and more simplified. Not simplified in a way that depth is missing, but simplified so that you can understand it because unfortunately Shurabindu has a very difficult writing style. Especially this chapter is very difficult, but the content is not. And the content is also very important and helpful. So Harkan. Shurabindu describes four types of knowledge, four types of knowledge. All of these types of knowledge are incomplete. Knowledge can never be complete. Later, the psychic being can have intuition that is yeah, replacing knowledge. But knowledge itself can never be complete and correct and truthful. But we can get closer to it. So the most extreme knowledge that is in the direction of untruth is knowledge by separation. The more dual the origins of knowledge, the more there is a feeling of separation with the object to know, the wronger it is. While if it's knowledge by identity, if you completely, if you can completely identify with the subject of your knowledge, if you feel it, if you feel, experience the object of knowledge, then you're closer to the truth. Those are the two extremes and then there are two in between. So there are four types of knowledge. So why do we, the question of course remains, why is there not just one kind of knowledge like most scientists think there is or also religious and all kinds of mainstream followers think there's one type of knowledge is either right or wrong which is not true but why is there knowledge this is which is half true or only partly true or misguided by separation why don't we just have the ability as human beings to have the best kind of knowledge? As has been claimed by many philosophers that our power of reason gives us the possibility of full knowledge. So it's only a matter of how much we know, but not the quality of knowledge. This is very different, different in the Vedas and Upanishads and Shurabindu builds upon that. So there is wronger and truer knowledge and he describes this as four but why do we have to start with this falser knowledge so to say first of all we have to build up first we have to build an ego which is a process of separation of duality and then find ourselves our personality later we have to find our cosmic self so to say our soul, our spirit. And when we have connection to our soul, our spirit, we can have more truer forms of knowledge or we can access them. But while we're still in the process of building and finding our personality, our ego, it is not possible, only partly. But for some reason, and the way we are made as human beings, we have to build the ego first before we can let it go or before we can realize that this is not our only self. Mostly our ego is a defense mechanism. A defense mechanism, a wall, a fortress against all kinds of things, but mostly, and this is new, very, very few other philosophers and spiritual teachers ever said this, Shubindu says or writes that 
it is also a defense against the invasion of cosmic energy. There are all kinds of energies floating and beaming through the cosmos. Partly we are also protected by the ozone layer and stuff like that. But some cosmic energy reaches at us and is destructive. Or at least it is destructive until we know what to do with it. And until that time, our ego and our defenses and our dual knowledge protects us. We cannot just let all the knowledge and all the energies in unfiltered. That would be very destructive, or at least initially. It's too much at the beginning, too much and too intense. For some reason, we need time to develop this spiritual knowledge, this inmost soul, this inner power, this spirit substance. And the more we develop this, the more energy we can perceive and also stand and withstand without just blocking it off. Right now, if you're mostly concerned with your ego and your feeling of separation, you're blocking it off. Later, you can feel it and observe it. This is also why they said that later on your spiritual journey, journey you anywhere you get all the cities. Because the cities are nothing else but to observe and interpret and use these additional energies that beforehand we needed to fight against or resist against. So knowledge is not only data. It's not only an accumulation of information. That's not knowledge. Also, the ancient Greeks didn't call that knowledge. Knowledge and information are not the same. Because information can be completely wrong. Knowledge is at least partly right and ideally mostly right. So, once you're in contact, more and more in contact with your soul, with your spirit, with your psychic being, then you can go into direct contact with things also because you don't experience the separation anymore. The feeling of separation, of course, is a defense mechanism and we need it initially to somehow feel self, to overcome this feeling that we're one with our parents. We need to go through this process of individuation and later we can go back to a feeling, a perceiving of unity, but we cannot start with the unity. If we haven't experienced separation, we cannot understand what unity is. That would be very naive and we probably would um, mix up unity with our mother, with unity with the divine or with the absolute, which is exactly what many people are doing. Uh, they're looking in their gurus or in the divine, they're looking for a substitute for their parents. This, of course, is also not higher knowledge because it's still based on separation. Once you've realized that you're not the same as your mother, the separation, the dualism starts, and then it doesn't matter what the dual partner is to your consciousness, to your feeling of self. It can be the divine also, the world or the cosmos. You cannot fake feeling spiritual unity. The separation disappears, the dualism disappears by itself when you're ready. And then unity is. It's not something that you can practice or work towards or either it is or it isn't. But it will come. And when there's a real sense of unity, then there can be also an identifying identification with the object and a direct knowledge of the object or subject. You just know how someone else feels like, or a plant or an animal too, or a stone for that matter, why not? Again, we come back to the different types of bodies, the gross physical body, the subtle energetical body, and the mental causal body. Uh, this is also, we start with the gross body, or as, as uh, newborns probably, we still have access to all three, but we don't know what to do with it. Also, we can't move and can't speak and so on. 
But then first we focus on our gross body and on our mind and our ego and later we come back to our energetical and causal bodies or mental bodies as Shobindo calls it. And there's a reason why he called it mental. I think it's a bit of a, a name that fosters misunderstandings but there's a reason why he called it mental body. Because there are parts of our minds so to say, that have access to higher knowledge and higher energies. And this is also the mental body. But this the, the mental body you can only use if you feel unity and not separation anymore and not trauma anymore and not fear and guilt and shame. In the mental body there's no more time and no more causality and no more separation. So you can also get stuck there. It can be pretty impassive. Real Samadhi is just sitting there in deep, deep meditation like a vegetable. But that's also not our aim. Knowledge by identity is more of an awareness. It's not a thinking process. And it's not, uh, you don't reach it by an analytical process of um, discrimination. It's an awareness of what is in the Upanishads it says, He who sees all existences in the self, he who sees all the self in all existences, he in whom the self has become all existences. So it's a total inclusion, a total merging. So either the sense of identity of unity is stronger or the sense of differentiation, of separation, of duality is stronger. If you are identified not in a psychological way, but in a spiritual way. If you really feel your surroundings, then you're merging with the surroundings and you're organizing your energetical self according to your surroundings. And also you, you organize the surroundings energetically according to your higher self. And to practice that, we have to go through these four steps of falser knowledge towards truer knowledge. We have to practice that first in simple steps before everything is flooding towards us unfiltered. The inconscience is the inverse reproduction of the supreme superconscience. Yeah, the inconscience, the nations, the not knowing, the knowing of falsehood, the mistaking of falsehood for truth is the opposite, the inverse of the total knowledge of the uh, through the psychic being and the intuition connection with the highest consciousness that we can contact, the supramental. But we cannot jump there. We want to jump there, but it's not possible. We have to practice a little bit first. Our consciousness has to emerge first. It's again this process of involution and evolution. First there's an involution and then there's an emerging through evolution. Opening up. Unfolding. Letting all the defenses drop. The awareness is slowly manifested and brought out. And also then we can feel life we can feel the vibration of life itself, of life energy, of life force, of chit. And to be open, to be ready, able to receive this chit, to perceive this chit, there's an inward, downward movement first, internal, which can be and often is painful at first. And if we go through this, then we emerge on the other side, free, and able to see and feel and think much, much more and closer to the truth. This is knowledge by identity. Because there's no separation anymore. It's not knowledge like I describe or I perceive me perceiving you, feeling you, but we're one for that moment at least. But it's good to have some energy first. Free some life energy in yourself that is not distracted anymore 
by inner or outer drama, and then you have enough energy to stand all this information and energy coming in. To really, really feel yourself and really, really feel someone else, another human being, is quite a daunting experience. It's very, very intense. Of course, there's a huge uh, problem of um, knowing which knowledge you're accessing right now. So it's better to assume that is a lower type of knowledge. This is a common mistake for spiritual th seekers that they assume only because they're part of some religion or spiritual movement or because they read certain books or meditated that they're automatically able to perceive higher knowledge. That's unfortunately not true. You have to first go into this separation, into this ego individuation to the end, to its logical conclusion really face it with everything, with all the uncomfortable parts. That's why I was also doing videos on trauma therapies. And then it reveals itself as not really being there. It reveals itself not as a self, but as a defense mechanism. And then only you can start with this development of the cosmic consciousness, of the psychic being, of the soul, of the spirit, and then get into contact with knowledge by identity that then will present itself by itself directly without you having to do anything. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for giving this video a rating. It helps other people find these videos. Thank you to all my patrons. Thank you for joining me as a patron. Ask questions below if you like and see you soon.